team isn't just for therapists and clinicians, but did you know that team could be used for, say, personal trainers? Well, find out about how team can be used for personal trainers, life coaches, and a whole lot more in today's episode of Talking Team. Welcome to Talking Team CBT, where you'll hear stories from therapists and clinicians around the world on their journey and experience with Team CBT. Um, today, again, we don't have Daniel, but uh, wishing him well for uh, Yom Kippur and all the other holidays. Um, we'll have him back for, the, I think, the next interview. But today we have Mursad, and I didn't ask how you say your name. How do you say your name? Yeah, I think you said it correctly. The English version is perfect. I, I usually introduce myself as Mursad. Remember, okay. my family doctor used to, say, used to just call me Mursad. So. <laughs> Mursad. Mursad. Okay, well, it's great to have you today. And um, so we like to have variety on this ch channel, the show, and we're super excited because um, you're not a therapist. You're not a doctor. Tell us a little bit of, of, about yourself. Yeah, so uh, I'm Mursad Bektich. Uh, I was born in Bosnia, Bosnia-Herzegovina, in a little town called Srebrenica uh, during the war. When that happened, I moved to... I'm going to have to pause you. I'm so sorry. No um, Just a minute. I forgot to turn something off. Okay. No problem. Just a second here. Okay. okay. okay I might, have to, I might, I, I might re redo that. <laughs> um, I forgot I was rendering a video and my poor little laptop's getting old and it can't handle rendering a video and recording a video. And uh, oh, so yeah, you're putting a lot of on that one. <laughs> my bad. So um, why don't you start over telling us a little bit about yourself? So my yeah, my, as as the introduction, my name is Mursad Bektic. I was born in Bosnia Herzegovina in a little country called um in a little town called Srebrenica. Uh, when the war started in 1991, uh, my mother and my brothers, we uh, went to uh, Italy as refugees. And after Italy, we went to uh, Germany as refugees. And after five or so years there, we uh, ended up uh, in Lincoln, Nebraska. So um, as refugees there, uh, long story short, eventually my mother took the test to be, be a U.S. citizen, we lived there long enough, I became a U.S. citizen, uh, went to elementary school, high school there, uh, around uh, 12 years old, I started taking karate uh, with my uh, elementary school counselor, he was also my counselor in elementary school, okay. so he, was, uh, he also had his own karate studio, so he would come see me at school, then also some, then see me at, uh, at uh, karate, and he was a really great father figure. Uh, and to this day, he's a, a mental health practitioner in Lincoln, Nebraska. And uh, I, so I was doing karate. Uh, eventually, I started boxing. Uh, and throughout high school, I kind of stopped doing that. I had a little, I had like a performance anxiety issues. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, then I got, to, then I, got to, I was really scrawny too, so I started lifting weights. I got into bodybuilding, and around that was around 16 years old. And around that time, I found uh, found out about mixed martial arts. And this uh, one of the guys, big buff guys, I looked up to as in the weightlifting uh, scene, was into that. So I kind of did that for fun, and I was really good at it. I was always known for being a bit uh, a fighter, I, I guess you could say, and I took a really a good liking to it. Uh, uh, at that time, around 17 years old, it was everybody was graduating, looking at what they're going to do next in their life after high school. And uh, you know, I wasn't much of a school guy. Uh, at least when I came time to be get serious, it was a bit too late. Uh, so I decided I was going to be a UFC champion. I know it sounds a bit cliche, but I decided I was going to be a UFC champion. And I really went all out at it. Uh, I moved to a different city around... 17 years old uh, to train full time and uh, through opportunities I was able to land a scholarship uh, a couple of years later in Florida uh, to train full time and uh, I get paid uh, a weekly stipend to do that and 
you know, had a great amateur record, nine and zero amateur fights, uh, with amateur, and then as a professional, ended up going professional in two thousand eleven at nineteen, um, and then I got in the UFC when I was seven and zero, had a big fight, and so I was a professional athlete for over ten eight eight years or so over that, and then. Uh, that's a lot of stuff I'm telling. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's quite it's quite quite the um quite the uh biography autobiography. Yeah. So so you came from from Bosnia and and yeah. uh, and because of the war in the nineties you were a refugee in a couple places, yeah. Italy, which is uh, where yeah. my grandparents were from, and my husband's yeah. family was actually from Bosnia and Czechoslovakia long oh, wow. ways back. A long ways okay. back not refugees yeah. um, so, so some um, familiarity there and then you your mom it becoming guys i'm moving to nebraska becoming a u.s citizen so um started boxing from a mental health practitioner had had was a karate teacher at first you started karate oh, yeah okay um i find myself actually now starting to do empathy instead of interviewing you <laughs> Yeah, I was, I was thinking, I was like, oh, you're doing a good job. <laughs> I give you an A. For those of you are watching, <laughs> your team gives you your blood and you start forgetting to have somebody else. Um, so anyways, yes, let tell me a, a little bit about, um, you, you had an experience that tripped you up a little bit and you end up getting into team. So tell me, tell me about your team experience. How'd you find out about team? Yeah, so I was, uh, yeah, no problem. Oh, uh, yeah, so Team CBT, I found out about Team. Uh, I got I got injured for the second time. I had a first first time was ACL. I had a, I was pretty into. I was very determined to be a. You know, I was ranked pretty close to you know as a hopeful to be the next UFC champ and things like that. You know, I went undefeated, twelve and zero before I had my first defeat. So you know, I was training very hard. I had my first injury with my ACL. Uh, but I did pretty good. I was, you know, I was still in it mentally too, as far as my goals and what drove me. So I was really high on that. So then I got uh, moving to Canada. When I came to visit Canada uh, after my first loss, you know, I was looking, searching like why I lost. And so I was looking for answers and that. So then I was training even more hard. And then I had another injury. I broke my big toe, my right foot. So it sounds small, but it was, uh, it's like a crucial element for balance and coordination. Mm -hmm. So I had surgery for that. And, uh, that really kind of put me in a funk. And, mm. uh, yeah. That really put me in a funk and it's, it was worse. Actually, it was actually worse than my ACL injury because for my ACL injury, I did a lot of things to like, I was able to kickstart my training and recovery and PT, but a little toe was I went to the third like when I was going to the physical therapy, I was like, this is a joke, right? This is all we're doing. Uh so anyways, uh so I, I was in the funk and uh I was uh, just scrolling through podcasts, uh you know, psych, psychiatry, things more like self because I've always been pretty big on self development, personal development, self development. Mm -hmm. I've always been pretty big into that. And, you know, I feel like that's had a lot to do with my success as where I am, where I have been to this day. Uh, and then I ended up stumbling upon team uh, to the podcast. I listened to them. Oh, this is cool. I know there was words to the things I'm, li I'm the way I'm thinking. <laughs> I was a big all or nothing guy. Ah. Uh, in a lot of my, in a lot of ways, um, which was partially good, right? There's lots of good things to that. And it was great for my career to be that way. Uh, so anyways, I, I started noticing these things and words to the way I'm thinking. And then uh, then I got the book, uh, Feeling Good. And I was really into it, you know, sometimes when I get something, I get really into it. So I got into it and uh, yeah. Um, so that's how it started. Wow. And that so was about 2007, uh, late, yeah, early 2017. 17. Yeah, that, that's really common uh, thread from these interviews is people stumbling on the podcast. <laughs> and yeah, every once in a while, right. someone says, oh, you know, a friend or a colleague or, or a professor or something recommended it. But it's very much a stumble upon. And it's the reason we're doing these interviews, because people are just stumbling across it because it's not well taught and known. Um, 
So uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And how has team impacted your life? Well, I think it's a uh, team has impacted me in a lot of ways because uh again, kind of gave me a, a blueprint, if I'm finding words to put your thoughts to it. It gave me a blueprint to the way I was thinking, right? All or nothing thinking or you know, thinking th something's going to be a certain way, mental filter, uh, you know, jumping to conclusions, like these things that I was just doing without, I guess, being conscientious of them. So it really <clears throat> gave me a kind of blueprint to what I was doing. So being able to look at that and uh, calm myself down. And then I was, you know, I speak, I, I have uh, a lot of daily interactions with people. So then uh, I could see how they were doing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, then I could see how they were doing that. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, you know, it would help me. And it, like, it helped me a certain way. So then I would be able to sit with open hands and uh, kind of listen to them, become a good listener. And, you know, empathy was also big for me. I wasn't, they used to call me no mercy Mursad in the training room. So, <laughs> you know, so then I was, you know, yeah, I was able to have more empathy with people. And uh, so it just, uh, it gave me, a, I think it gave me a good, uh, give me a lot of things. It gave me uh, more understanding, more empathy, it really taught me what empathy is. And I was very, I wasn't familiar with that word at all back then. So it's definitely impacted me in a lot of ways in, in terms of empathy and then identifying the distortions and my own thoughts, but also in, in a lot of people I, I see daily, just by in our daily interactions. And, and I think uh, yeah, it makes me, yeah, I can do a lot of things, I guess, with that power. Yeah, well, tell me a little about about that. So, you, so you you were saying that um, you know you have more empathy in the training room. You used to be no mercy, Mursad. Tell me, <laughs> about how, how do you use this in the training room? How do you use team in the training room? Well, so not so much. I, well, in the training room, when I was training more competitively, now I I, I teach, I teach uh, clients. I work with clients more. Okay. Uh, so particularly with training, it's, it definitely makes me more calm as a competitor. Uh, as a competitor, I'm a better competitor because I can deal with my all or nothing thinking. Mm -hmm. I can deal with my prof professionistic uh, tendencies. Uh, you know, it, you know, before I had, a, I had a goal to be the best in the world. Well, it took me some time, but there's no one's ever really going to be the best in the world at any one point in time. So that was a hard reality for me to accept. And once I accepted that, I was like, oh, well, you know, all right, you know, what am I doing? <laughs> <You know? laughs> uh, so uh, from the competition standpoint, it helped me a lot of uh, like the sports, psychology, performance, and uh, visualization, keep me calm, uh, different, just different techniques from the sports psychology uh, spec. And then uh, from more of like a teacher, like how to be a better coach, uh, it really taught me how to be more empathetic with my clients, uh, be more empathetic with my clients, you know, have more compassion towards them. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, have more compassion toward, towards them. And also, uh, yeah, so be more, be more giving, be more, have more empathy. And also, I think what really made a difference is the feedback I learned kind of from team. Oh. Feedback, mm -hmm. uh, the measuring, the measuring, the feedback, you know, the grading. Uh, and then also my uh, my goal, my, my, my main goal when I train clients is to make them feel better. So, yeah, it's just to teach them skills, which I think I, I do a very good job at it because they're all because they all tend to get better. And they all keep coming back to me, uh, but I think my ability to you know measure how they're feeling, and, uh, so that's what I do with my other clients before I get start talking about nonsense. So that's what I do with my uh, my clients, my uh, my personal training clients. You know, I usually I talk to them, uh, regular greetings, and then I get into I know I don't know I don't think in team it's like recommended because I think I one time did it and. Uh, 
when your classes and your group classes and that lady like kind of freaked out on me I was like okay I'm sorry I <laughs> <laughs> but I think like a number so I, I tend to you know measure how they're feeling on the scale from zero to ten hmm. zero being the worst ten being the best as far as physical uh, physically and mentally how energetic yeah. they're feeling and you know they'll give me a grading you know usually like seven is a number I tend to get and then um so I, I do my empathy with that and uh, and then I get to work in the training. I get to work and right using different words, using different become more you know, before I could be a, a bit more hard and I'm still learning and I'm still learning as I as I teach more people. Uh, I could be more you know, we tend to be critical even when we're trying to get people better. So I'm learning how to use my words differently in the sense of uh, more just building them up getting them confident mm -hmm. feel good mm -hmm. well lots of a lot, lot a lot of positive reinforcement um with feedback so being more careful in the ways in the ways i use my words and not being over critical and then after our session after i'm done with our session i tend to measure again how are they feeling on a scale from zero to ten uh, and then they usually they they usually tend to be uh you know a, a, a probably usually nine maybe nice. I've been getting some nines like yeah. well nine yeah. <laughs> what well, well, would make it a ten and nice. then they would tell me that and okay and you know, big win small win huge win uh, you know how they feel and some some clients walk out feeling euphoric and you know, really high and feeling great and. Uh, some sometimes I have like adolescents and uh, they're very you know, up here. Oh, I'll give you a 7.5. <laughs> what? <laughs> I thought I did a great job. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, and that's also been, uh, you know, sometimes I attend, then I end up like thinking, like, man, what? I end up thinking about it all night. And before it would really sour my night, even when it's my wife, I'll be eating, and I'm thinking about that. Uh, how can I make that session better? And, uh, I yeah, love what you're saying, right? You you mentioned trainings and stuff. And, and you know, like a, a lot of people who are training with team and probably a lot of our listeners and stuff will be psychiatrists, psychologists and, and, and therapists. But we do, we are encouraging more and more life coaches and trainers and people of all different walks of life. I think there's a fellow, he's actually a plumber. Um, and he's, okay. he does team. So, you know, hey, you know, I wanna, wanted to see yeah. it in the world, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's more of like a, you know, I guess you could say a philosophy. Mm -hmm. you know, I enjoy when Dr. David talks about, uh, you know, the philosophy. And whenever he mentions things, I get really into it. Uh, uh, so I think, yeah, it's a, it's a way of, you know, approaching life, life, people, problems. Uh, yeah, I think it's just a good way to communicate, right? Uh, yeah. So that's what I enjoy about it. And right, and then you can grade it too. Like, the thing is, you can grade it and be surprised by your rating and the feedback. I think that's a lot of people don't take feedback, and uh, if they do, they right, they don't use it. So, look, okay, I mean, feedback can be hard on the ego, right? You know, like, yeah, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> so, that's a, that can that's be a challenge, ego, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and sometimes I get caught up on it too. I think I did a great session, I had a great session. And, Wow, really? I thought it was great for me, and mm -hmm. it's my ego because I, I, you know, I, I like to, yeah. I think I approach now. I'm starting to. I've been approaching it the same way I used to do with my, uh, my career. You know, I want to be the best. No, I'm not. I know I'm not gonna be the best trainer, but I, I tend to think I can be pretty up there uh, as far as, and it's different too. Yeah, I give you a lot. What? <laughs> It, it's important to hold on to our values and our personality. Yeah. We don't want to change who we are. We don't want to change who our clients are. And uh, we just want to use their, their values to the strengths and, yeah. and not let those values kind of, you know, get in the way. You, you mentioned you had performance anxiety before. Doesn't it scare you to get feedback? Are you not worried you're going to perform or how, how's that been? Yeah, so uh, again, yeah, I did mention I have performance exam, and sometimes I still do, depending on certain things, because I'm, mm. uh, I don't know, I, I tend to have a lot of interests. Sorry, I tend to have a lot of interests in life, and I want to do a lot of things. Uh, 
so yeah, it, it definitely. I, I, yeah, I'm a, sometimes I'm afraid to ask for feedback or what this person would say, but at the same time, it's a, it's just like for me. I know it's uh, it's a bit different for you, but it was a fight, you know. So I would get ready, and sometimes you just go in there, right? You get into the flow state by practice, by practice, by practice, and so I just have a different uh, a different approach to it now. You know, I know it's only going to make me better. Uh, so it's like the more feedback and, and then I'm also learning how to like to not some people always have something to say complain about uh, you know I think like uh, sometimes I try to use uh, David's anti-heckler technique because <laughs> 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 I have some heckler sometimes <laughs> uh, so um, yeah of course I, I have a you know I think I, I still deal with that not so much as the issue but I think it, and I just look at the positive side, uh, positive side of that uh, perfectionistic mentality of you know, I'm more okay with myself being, you know, I, I yeah I think I'm, I'm a go getter, so uh, I'm more realistic because of team, and you know that I'm kind of going <laughs> going a bit cuckoo when uh, I'm getting too into things <laughs> or too hard on myself. I just go back to the basics mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. why I'm doing why I'm doing it. Uh, what the purpose is, you know, what is the purpose? The purpose is to make people feel better. And uh, I know that I'm doing something different than most trainers, in my field at least. Most trainers are doing, a lot of gyms are doing, you know, a lot of people are used to people screaming at them when they're mm -hmm. doing things. And when they are doing those things, it's really silent. They don't say anything. So I'm trying a lot of different things, uh, teaching them skills about like self-defense, you know, encouraging them to do good in school. Uh, so I really want the best for my clients too and, and for the children. Uh, the same thing, just from not myself being a much more mature adult now, I'm knowing myself when I was younger. And uh, yeah, so again, I'm rattling off. <laughs> well, I love what you're saying. I, I, I took karate myself for a short period of time. Um, I think it was late elementary school and uh, my my sensei was actually a golden glove boxer um uh, and uh he would get down on the floor with me because i was like i can't do bunny hops i can't do bunny hops and he's like yes you can yes you can and he'd get right beside me and he'd do one two with me and he just all the way and every else would be doing them back and forth but he'd take the time just to be with me and keep encouraging mm -hmm. me to do it whereas i think if it had been like screaming yelling at me i probably would have just been like you know, yeah, for you and leave. You know, because yeah, I, I was pretty, as a pretty ornery, uh, you know, as an only child. So I kind of did what I wanted when I wanted. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, I was kind of like that too. He just got in there with with me, and it reminded me of you know you're practicing this and you're trying to show it with your clients. Um, and it's so important for us to do this work ourselves and be in the trenches. Um. And yeah. show rather than yeah. just do, rather than just talk. Absolutely right. Yeah, absolutely good. Because it's so easy, right, just to talk about these things and right, do uh, do as I say, not as I. Yeah, do, yeah. As do as I, I say, not as I do. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that kind yeah. of thing. So absolutely, I think it makes a world of difference. And uh, so I, I think I'm just taking that approach. Not that I'm taking the third some therapist concepts and applying them to what I can. Because I enjoy making people, I enjoy talking to people, I enjoy, you know, asking people questions, and I'm always getting things at parties or get-togethers, like, yeah, some weird questions, man. <laughs> oh, wow, we're going pretty deep. <laughs> I don't know, I, I find it interesting, I get, you know, pretty bored. That's with really that, cool. Well, what, what is, what's something you've noticed in your clients when you use team that's maybe something you didn't expect as a trainer? Yeah, well, yeah, no, what have I noticed when I use team? I've noticed uh, the connection between us is stronger. I, I noticed them let their guards down. I noticed uh, that they feel more confident. Uh, they feel, yeah, they definitely feel more confident. Uh, um, I mentioned confidence translates into their performing better. Yeah, absolutely. Their self esteem, right? Their confidence, self esteem. Uh, I think their work at output, you know, I, I hear from other, you know, from relatives that I can just tell they're, they're more into 
they're more in tune to others. They're more aware. Mm -hmm. uh, the they can see the facial expressions, and then so those are the kind of things that make me feel as a good trainer. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah then, just uh, you're, it's it's like like they're making it's making a whole difference for them, not just like a surface. Yeah. Thing. Um, is yeah, there go ahead. No, no, please, please go ahead. I say, is there something about team that surprised you? You know, you're listening to these podcasts and then you tried it out for yourself. Is there something that surprised you? Yeah, for me, I think the surprising thing is like, oh yeah, it actually works. <laughs> <laughs> a of, there's a lot of smoke and mirrors out there, isn't there? A lot of snake oil salesmen. Yeah, absolutely, but like I, have, I always, I tend to say, you know, our words create our worlds, and I know there's like different meanings to that. You know, I mean, David thing. There's certain things that David thinks are like, you know, Wittgenstein and. I read that book and I thought it was like philosophical investigations, and I, so I also think to think like language does a does is language is big in life. So when we when we have a vocabulary and we use certain vocabularies, we can bring out certain things in people and we can make them feel a certain kind of way mm -hmm. by asking them and receiving information. So for me, uh, with team, it was more I found that like the techniques. You know, there's certain techniques in my sport you practice and you get better technique you know if you practice bad technique you'll have bad technique right and then if you right. practice good technique you'll likely have good uh, results so i find that's very practical to to daily living right asking yeah asking just questions and, and, and with that feedback asking more questions and grading and so yeah we could go on and on about it yeah, yeah get, getting feedback. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, we're we're running out of time, but uh, it was great having you on. I have one last question for you. Yeah, so, um, you know, if other trainers were out there listening to this uh, podcast, this YouTube video, what's one thing about team you'd like them to know? Uh, what's one thing I'd like them about team to know? I think just um, well, one, it works, <laughs> so it actually works. So two would be practice it on yourself, practice it. I know I've heard it said in the podcasts and the shows and the workshops. Um, you know, I've snuck into the workshops a few times <laughs> <laughs> for fun. Uh, so uh, yeah, I would say practice it daily life. You know, I think practice makes perfect. Even, even the perfection doesn't exist. It does, you can get better at it. Uh, try it out. You know, try it out to measure you know you can do measuring the, the empathy with your clients i think it goes a long way making them feel more comfortable uh, making them feel more open more connected to you uh you know uh, and i think that also kind of goes hand in hand with what you really want to do with your practice uh the kind of practice you want to run <clears throat> what your outcome goal is my goal is to make people feel better in my training sessions teach them skills but also teach them you know, anything there's lots of things that I think that they get from training with me outside of uh outside of just some skills of fighting skills yeah I well I I'm like sure it that I answers like... your question yeah yeah so they're you know you're um sounds great love, love that you're incorporating this into training um and uh I think that that's pretty cool and hope we yeah. hope we hear about more people doing using team CBT in other ways other than just as therapy. Certainly, yeah. um, exciting to hear Absolutely. different ways to use it. Thank yeah. you. For being Thank you so here. much. Uh, my pleasure. Anytime you're in Montreal, uh, let me know and I uh, will get you a, a fitness session. In. All right. <laughs> <good>. <laughs> bye bye. Uh, thanks, Angela. Bye bye. Mm -hmm.